Welcome to Retro Arcade Reviews. My name is John, and in this episode, we will be reviewing the arcade classic, Rolling Thunder. Rolling Thunder is a side-scrolling action game that was developed by Namco in 1986. Now, I remember first playing this game at a hotel and dying right away. The game just caught me a little off guard because I had trouble jumping up and down these platforms, but then I got the hang of it. Sadly, that's the first and only recollection of the game I remember. It's not a game I remember seeing at a lot of places, and trust me, I was looking because I owned and loved the sequel for the Genesis. It wasn't until I years later that I was able to play the game on an emulator that I fully got to experience the game. One thing I appreciated about the game is that it had an 80s anime feel to it because of the sprite design and the frame animation when you shoot and jump from platform to platform. I know it may be a tiny detail but I find that attention to small details can really bring a character to life. Otherwise the character can be dull and lifeless even if the game is cool. In this game you play as Albatross, a member of the Rolling Thunder Espionage Unit, a division of the World Crime Police Organization. You are tasked to rescue fellow female agent Leela Blitz from a secret society named Geldra. You have to fight your way through 10 stages of 1960s themed henchmen before your final encounter with the leader of Geldra, Mabu. At your disposal, you have a standard issue pistol and a machine gun you can pick up along the way. You have a limited number of bullets and if you run out, you can only fire a single slow bullet. You do have a life bar but it's pretty much pointless because if you basically get touched twice, that's pretty much it. Once for more stronger weapons. However, Rolling Thunder is pretty balanced in difficulty. It's not too hard hard nor too easy. It can be slightly frustrating at first but you just have to play it a few times and remember where the doors for reloading and upgrading are. You'll get the hang of it once you've played a couple of times. It just depends on how dedicated you are. Most enemies just take one or two bullets to kill so you don't have to go bang bang crazy so conserve as necessary. You can also evade enemies by going into doors and hiding out for a few seconds if things get hectic. Similar to elevator action. Actually the game is a lot like Shinobi with a bit of elevator action thrown in. Rolling Thunder was ported over to the ZX Spectrum Commodore 64, the Amstrad CPC, Amiga, the Atari ST, and the NES. It was included in the Namco Museum Archive for the PlayStation, Namco Museum Battle Collection for the PSP, Namco Virtual Arcade for the Xbox 360, and the Namco Museum 50th Anniversary for the PS2, GameCube, Xbox, Game Boy Advance, and the PC. Rolling Thunder is also included in the Namco Museum for the Switch. I wouldn't say this game is bad. I mean, to say it's bad would be kind of subjective because it depends on if you're a dedicated retro gamer or not. In my opinion, it's kind of difficult if you're playing games like Red Dead Redemption 2 or Fallout for you to sort of commit to a game like this. I feel like it's easier for retro gamers who are already used to the aesthetic and difficulty to fully commit to Rolling Thunder. But again, there's always exceptions to the rule. And if you feel like you're that exception, I say play the game and let me know what you think.